the little that he's doing to it. This little gadget is absolutely perfect for making your own sort of spice mix. This is polycarbonate. It's a really durable, tough little piece of machinery. And the idea is getting all your spices in there, blitzing it, and we're going to make a really nice sea bass spice mix. We're going to start off with star anise. Now, again, star anise into the mix. And the beauty of this, of course, you don't have to chop them. You don't have to worry about crushing anything. Fennel seeds in. And the most exciting thing about this particular mix is that we do this and tailor make it around the fish that's available in the seasoning. And it's great for um, paste, curry paste. Look, white peppercorns, fennel seeds, star anise in. And just watch what happens. Extraordinary. Cardamom seeds. Cardamom seeds and star anise go brilliantly well together. Don't even need to pod them. And then finally, some really nice coriander seeds. And when you think how long it would take with a pestle and mortar to crush this, this is extraordinary because it grounds all the spices down within seconds. Right, lid on. Give it a little shake. And then bar mix on. And look, extraordinary. Look, beautiful. See? Now, amazing. And the nice thing about it, you can actually make these spice mixes instantly. This is um, a really nice way of coating a sea bass. And look, because it's nice and fine, we're going to season the sea bass, both sides, and then into a nice nonstick pan, olive oil, and then with all that spice mix, on top of the skin, rub it in. And because it's nice and fine, we can really get it in that skin and sort of almost perfume the sea bass. And it just smells amazing. It's not even cooked yet. Skin side down, non-stick pan, and look. Now, this is the most amazing mix for fish, especially this time of year. And it is just full of flavor. The most important thing is you can vary your mixes. So great for breadcrumbs, chocolate, of course, get into a really nice fine powder. And of course, coffee beans, when you want to sort of grind coffee bean, whether you're making the most amazing coffee ice cream or the most amazing espresso. And again, look, self-contained. And you can vary these kind of mixes. Crucial. OK, turn my sea bass. If I was a fish, uh, slice them up. Look at that. Beautiful. The smell of that is amazing. And the most important thing about this thing is that it's just quick, easy, and you can make so many different kinds of spice mix that you can have your favorite seasoning. We do it with all the chefs across all the restaurants where they sort of do their own little pick and mix. So they have their own varied little spice mix. And it's quite extraordinary how diverse that can become. And now the chefs have actually got their name on it. And it's something that it's like, is it Mark Sargent's seasoning? Is it Mark Askew's? Is it Angela's? Is it mine? Because we're sort of a little bit precious when it comes to seasoning things. And this little machine is a way of sort of hiding all those little secrets in there, powering them down. And then we give them to the young cooks to try and guess the smell of the spice in there. So perfect. OK, sea bass. Look, turn that over. Now look what's happened now to that skin. Just look at the flavor. Just look at the color. And the flavour, and because we've been grinding those spices down almost five sort of seconds before we started cooking with it, it's just so fresh in terms of pungent, it's powerful. And the blend of the star anise, cardamom, fennel seeds, peppercorns, coriander seeds is extraordinary. Amazing. I done one um, last week with some fresh lemongrass in there. And it was slightly wet, the powder, but the perfume was amazing. And the lemongrass was just sort of blitzed into almost like a pulp, but the flavor was extraordinary. OK. Sea bass, ready to come out of the pan. Sauce. Now, this is where, for me, the bar mix becomes you know, a completely, I mean, 10-dimensional tool in the kitchen, because what we're going to do now is aerate the sauce and create a little bit of froth, because 
that was my sort of, I suppose my hallmark really, when I came out of Paris. We took sort of heavy sedated sauces and lightened the sauces up on the back of the bar mix because it incorporates a lot of air and that's how the whole fascination with these foam sauces started. But we're not obsessed by foam, but we're obsessed with the lightness and the bar mix is just brilliant at finishing sauces and therefore you need a lot less on your plate and the flavour is extraordinary. Light and it's almost like it sort of bubbles in your mouth. Okay, sea bass onto the plate. Look at those spices, amazing. Onto the plate. So bring the sauce up to the boil and to finish it, again, just place the bar mix in the centre of the pan and that does the work for you. Look, it just aerates the sauce. It's a really nice way of actually sort of taking four or five portions of sauce and stretching it to eight or nine portions of sauce and the whole thing just lightens up. But look, again, and the nice thing about the bar mix, if you wanted to finish this sauce with some fresh basil, some tarragon or fresh parsley, you don't need to spend time chopping the basil, the parsley, get it in there and blitz it in. How many times have you seen people um, chop the hell out of parsley and then all of a sudden they put the parsley in the sauce and all the greens on the board? The nice thing about the bar mix is you can actually put the parsley, the basil, any herb in the sauce and it blitzes it. The sauce changes colour and look what's happened now. A sauce, look at the aeration, beautiful. When we come to finish our sauces, a lot of our sauces and our cooking today is a, a very light way of eating. So we always finish with um, things like ice cubes um, in sauces, a little knob of butter, a little tablespoon of cream. And rather than cook with it, we finish with it. And the perfect way to finish it, of course, is to get it blitzed by the bar mix. And you know, for me, you know, my kitchen would never be the same um, unless we had these bar mixes littered around the kitchen. In fact, we have one on every section, whether it's the fish, the meat, the starters, the hot starters, the cold starters, the canapes, the desserts, even for finishing custards or putting chocolate through a custard or infusing a sauce or blending a sorbet, it is extraordinary. Froth the sauce and what I want to do now is just scoop that really nice light froth, look, out of there, on and you've got that lightness. It's not sedated, it's not a heavy, seduced, thick, over rich sauce and it just puts another dimension to the dish because it's aerated, it's light, it's frothy, exciting. It's perfect. You could really identify my style uh, on the back of what we do with this. And I get really um, narked when chefs just jump on the bandwagon, endorse products, um, just for the sake of getting their name and their face uh, on a box. And it's embarrassing, really. Um, this is you know, high quality. It's got longevity. It's not the kind of thing you have to replace within two years. The motors don't burn out. It doesn't happen. It's, you know, incredibly, you know, it's professional and it's diverse. So, this has integrity and I wouldn't put my name to it unless I was, A, been used to using them for 10, 15 years and B, you know, it's, it's me. So, it's, you know, it's a natural marriage and something I don't have any form of worry about because it speaks for itself. And when you think of what we spend on shoes nowadays, how much a pair of jeans cost nowadays, what kind of money people are spending in their kitchens, and stoves, granite, ice machines, uh, the most amazing fridges, you know, this is a phenomenal piece of apparatus that I think down the line can actually save you money.